Thus far in our discussion on purifying proteins, we discussed eight different types of techniques or methods that we can use to basically purify a mixture of proteins and isolate a protein that we actually want to study. Now, the next question is, how do we actually know that the purification method that we carry out is actually working? So, how do we know that we are purifying our protein mixture following some type of technique? So, in biochemistry, we actually develop five different types of quantities. And these five different types of quantities can be measured following that purification procedure and we can compare those quantities to before and basically they can tell us whether or not our procedure is actually working in purifying that protein mixture. So let's discuss what these five quantities are. We have the total protein, we have the enzyme activity, also known as the total activity, we have the specific activity, we also have yield and purification level. So let's begin by discussing what these quantities actually mean and then let's take a look at an example at how we can purify proteins and use these quantities to basically determine whether or not our technique is working. So let's begin with the total protein. The total protein is simply the total amount of protein that we begin with in our sample before we carry out that particular purification technique and this is usually given in milligrams. Now, what about enzyme activity? Well, the enzyme activity we spoke about before and we said that the enzyme activity tells us the ability of that enzyme to basically promote a specific type of reaction within that sample. And the units are micromoles per minute. So the classical units are micromoles per minute, which is equal to a unit, but nowadays we also use moles per second. So what the enzyme activity tells us is how many milli or how many micromoles of that product that is produced by the enzyme per minute or how many micromoles of the substrate is transformed by that enzyme every single minute. Now, what about the specific activity? Well, the specific activity is simply the ratio of the enzyme activity to the total protein. So the units are unit per milligram are the units of the specific activity or micromole per minute per milligram are the units of specific activity. Now, what does the specific activity actually tell us? Well, it tells us how pure or by how much more pure our sample is following that purification technique and usually if the technique actually works this specific activity value has to increase as we'll see in just a moment. Now let's move on to our yield. So the yield or the percent yield basically tells us how much of that protein that we essentially want to isolate we have left over compared to how much we began with. So this describes the enzyme activity that is retained following each purification step and it is given as a percentage. Now the equation for yield is the following. So it's the ratio of the enzyme activity of that specific procedure to the original enzyme activity found in that original sample that we began with and we multiply the ratio by 100%. So because this is a ratio, the units cancel out and our units are simply percent. My, now, by definition, we give our original sample that hasn't yet been purified a yield of 100%. And then as we purify our sample more and more, the yield should technically decrease. Now, what about the purification level? Well, the purification level is calculated by using this specific activity. So these two quantities tell us the same exact thing. So this is a measure of how effective each step is in purifying that protein that we want to isolate and study. So the purification level is equal to the ratio of the specific activity of that particular procedure to the specific activity of that original sample. And notice that it's also ratio, so the units cancel out and we don't have any units. 
And just like the original mixture is given a percent yield of 100, that original mixture is given a percent yield of 1. And following our procedure, if that procedure actually worked and we purified our sample, this quantity has to increase. So specific activity increases and purification level also increases if our procedure is actually working. And the yield decreases because as we go from one process to another, we usually lose a certain amount of product, a certain amount of protein in that procedure. So now to see actually how these quantities can be used to basically determine if the purification procedure is working, let's take a look at a hypothetical example. So let's suppose we have a beaker. In that beaker, we have a sample, a mixture of different types of proteins as shown in the following diagram. Now, what we want to do is we want to use several of the different types of procedures that we spoke of earlier and basically purify our sample, purify and isolate some specific type of protein found inside that mixture. And the way that this is usually done is we choose some specific type of procedure, we carry that procedure out, and then we, uh, we extract that sample and we place that sample into an SDS page setup. So we expose our sample to SDS polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis to basically separate our proteins based on size. And as we go from one step to another step, if the procedure is working, we have to get less bands and less bands and less bands until we get a single band as we'll see in just a moment. And that basically means we're purifying our sample because we're removing some of those proteins with specific mass values as we'll see in just a moment. And every time we conduct the procedure, we also calculate these five quantities and these, uh, and these five quantities basically tell us if our technique is actually working. So let's actually see by what we mean. So let's actually see what we mean by taking a look at the following diagrams. So this is our initial beaker. In that initial beaker, we have that sample. So we take a pipette, we extract a small amount from that beaker, and we essentially drop that into this well. And this is essentially step A. So in step A, we expose the original homogenous mixture to the SDS page setup. And we get the following distribution of bands. So this is step A. And for step A, these are the different types of bands and each band basically represents a type of protein with a specific type of size, with a specific type of mass. So remember, in SDS polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, the proteins that have a higher mass are higher up, but the proteins that are smaller have a lower mass, lower size, are lower along our gel. Now, in step A, we basically find that the total protein in milligrams that we're dealing with is 20,000 milligrams. Now, the enzyme activity is 200,000 micromoles per minute or units. Now, the specific activity we'll calculate in just a moment, and because this is our original mixture, the yield is 100% and the purification level is 1. Now, what about the specific activity? So we have to calculate the specific activity to be able to determine whether these steps are actually purification steps and whether they are actually working. So what is our specific activity? So the specific activity is the ratio of the enzyme activity to the protein, the total protein in our sample. So 200,000 divided by 20,000, and that gives us a value of 10. So the four zeros cancel, we get 20 divided by two, and that gives us a value of 10. So now that we have all these five values, now we can take, we can extract another portion of this same sample, and now we expose it to the process of salting out. And in salting out, we basically separate our protein mixture based on their ability to dissolve in a salt concentration. And following salting out, we extract 
that protein mixture and we essentially apply the process of dialysis to remove those salts that we don't actually want inside our mixture. And once we have that extraction, we place it into the second well in the SDS page apparatus. And this is procedure B. So notice that this distribution of bands consists of less bands than before. And what that basically tells us is, as we go from A to B, we decrease the number of proteins inside that mixture that we actually don't want. And so that means it's a good thing because what that means is we're purifying our protein mixture. And if we go to the following table, these values should tell us exactly that. So remember, as we are purifying, the specific activity should increase and that should increase the purification level. So these two quantities compared to these should actually increase. So let's see if that's true. So to calculate the specific activity, we take the enzyme activity of that particular sample divided by the total protein, once again, of that that particular sample. So we get 175 divided by 5 because these three zeros cancel out and we get a value of 35. So let's, exp let's express that once again with red. Now what about the purification level? Let's actually ex uh, write that down in purple. And to find the purification level, we use this equation. So the specific activity of that particular sample to the specific activity of the original sample that we began with. And so 35 divided by 10, and that gives us 3.5. Now, what that means is that extracted sample that we extracted after salting out is 3.5 times as pure as our original sample. And so what that means is our procedure did in fact work because it purified our sample. And that is precisely what is shown when we go from this band distribution to this band distribution. Going here to here, we decrease the number of bands and that means we remove those unwanted proteins from our mixture. Now let's go, oh, and by the way, what is our yield? Well, the yield should decrease because every time we carry out a procedure, we lose a certain amount of protein from our mixture. And so what is our yield? Now to find the yield, we have to take the enzyme activity. We divide it by the original enzyme activity. So the enzyme activity of that sample we extracted divided by the original enzyme activity and we multiply that by 100. So this divided by this, the three zeros cancel out, we get seven divided by eight multiplied by 100 and that gives us 87.5 and let's use blue to basically designate that. So notice even though the yield decreased, it didn't decrease by as much and so that's a good thing because that means we're not losing the majority of the protein. Now let's move on to C. In C, we take that extracted mixture following salting out and we expose that to ion exchange chromatography. And in ion exchange chromatography, we basically separate our protein mixture based on the net charge. And so based on our electrophoresis setup, we see that following ion exchange chromatography, when we extract that mixture and place it into this well, we produce this distribution of bands. And because we decrease the number of bands we see, that means we remove some of those proteins. And so we are purifying our mixture. And so that should basically correspond to higher values in these two boxes. So let's calculate what the specific value is for step C. So we basically take the enzyme activity of that specific sample, right? And we divide it by the total protein because as always, specific activity is this divided by this. So this divided by this basically give us, uh, gives us, so we uh, cross out the three zeros and we get 125 divided by one and that leaves us with 125. Now, what about the purification level? The purification level is 125 divided by 10, and that gives us 12.5. And so we see that this extracted sample 
following this salting out procedure and ion exchange chromatography, this extracted sample of proteins is 12.5 uh, times more uh, pure than our original sample, and that is a good thing. That means our procedure is working. Now, for it to work properly, this yield value shouldn't decrease by too much. So let's see what that yield value is. To calculate the yield value, we take the enzyme activity, 125,000 divided by 200,000, multiply that by 100. So 125 divided by 200 gives us 5 divided by 8, and we multiply that by 100%, uh, and that basically gives us uh, 62.5. So 62.5, and that is not that much of a difference. And so the point is, if by the end we get about 30% 30, 30 yield, that is a good enough yield to basically be able to work with and study that protein. So let's move on to D. In D, we take that extracted mixture following ion exchange chromatography and we expose it 